So first of all, thank you very much for watching. It's been quite a little bit more slower on the updates and videos, etc. And that's because we've released version 1.0. And why would that be the reason that things slow down? It's because um, I was kind of lost. I didn't know where to take the connector next, what priorities to give to whatever it was more like. I finished a part and I missed that next dot on the horizon. But I hope that um, with this update and some new plans that are coming up that we regained our track. Now, this update will hopefully make updating in the future simpler for you guys and for me as well. So it took me a year before I realized it, but um, the old zip system, it kind of sucked. Uh, it wasn't bad per se, it was great that you could just unpack it, run the EXE um, and be done with it. But in reality, if a new update came out, you suddenly had two zip files. So you had to remove the old folder, extract a new one. By accident, you probably installed the old one a time or two. That could lead to quite some frustration, at least for me. So I decided to get rid of it. We finally got an installer. The installer will get its data from the internet. So the moment that a new version comes live, it will also retrieve the newest version instead of an old one. So hopefully that leads to less data loss, frustration, makes things easier. You can now just run the maintenance tool to update. Um, you can start it from the application itself even. It will show that little blue button that says new update available. You hit it, it will open the maintenance tool and the maintenance tool is the place where you can update components, remove components or uh, install new ones. So in the future, I will also want to add the uh, libraries towards the same package system. So you've got one place where you can download everything from the maintenance tool if I ship a new update towards the internet, the internet is going to tell you, hey, a new update is available. You hit new update and it will update for you without having to juggle those little zip files and you're just done. You just hit update and you've got the latest version. Don't want to miss out on the next update. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you want to be notified as well. Now, and perhaps for the last time, I'm going to ask you to go to bitsandroids.com slash downloads and on there you'll find an online installer. If you download that EXE, probably Windows is going to ask, do you trust this um, vendor? It's up to you. Uh, I trust myself, so I said yes and installed the EXE, which will open an installation wizard. From the installation wizard, it will always retrieve the latest version from the web server. It contains the WASM module, the events file and the connector. Highly recommend to, even though perhaps you have a certain part installed, to just toggle everything on. So if you're using the connector, make sure to quickly make a backup of the events file, because then we can later put it back into place. So even though I might not be the best judge of this because I made the dawn thing, but I feel that it's starting to get a little bit more professional. Now, if you're new on board, welcome, and this will be the first screen that you're gonna see. But for those of you that have been around a little bit longer, are gonna miss something. There used to be an input mode, an output mode, and a dual mode. It's still there, so don't worry, but I wanted to give people that are just joining the club a more streamlined experience. One screen where you could add inputs, outputs, do both, without having to know, uh, without, without having to juggle with where do I connect the board that I want to? Is it an output? Is it a dual? Is it an input? It led to quite some confusion to those that haven't been following along since day one. If you've been following along, you're like, oh, well, Dave, you've told me this 1000 times. I completely understand how it worked and I like that experience. Just open the view menu where you'll find the button toggle advanced mode. If you toggle the advanced mode, you'll go back to the old version with the separate input, output and dual mode and you can use it just as before. Most home cockpit builders have several modules. One for the throttle, uh, perhaps one for uh, some kind of toggle. Some people have huge modules that can do 100 things, while others have more, you know, separate modules for each thing. One thing that really bothered me in the past is that if, now it would save the data that you used last. So it would remember which COM port was connected and which set you've used, and it was all fine. The downside is that the moment that your USB wasn't connected while the connector started, it would just revert to the first one it found. And then the next time you boot up, you replug the USB, you have to reset everything back to the proper COM ports, 
which was quite cumbersome in my opinion. So right now, if you unplug a USB device and you hit refresh, for instance, it will default to not connected. This basically means that you can just leave the settings there, replug the USB, hit refresh again, and it will reload your last saved setup. You can even start the connector when while you have a not connected line in there. It will just completely ignore that line, don't send any data to it, and doesn't listen to any data on it. If you notice a not connected line and you reconnect your USB, it does require you to manually stop and start the connector to resend or receive data from that replugged board. Now, this is something that I still have to prove on a future version, but for now, this is already like leaps ahead of what it was before. Now, a thing I got asked a lot is the moment I load in my plane, it doesn't receive, let's say, the heading of the autopilot or the altitude. It will stay at zero or whatever default value you've set up. Now, the problem was that it only sent data when it changed from your starting point. So if you start at one and you don't flip the switch, it will stay one and it wouldn't send data because one is equal to one, nothing happens. What happens now is it sends that first state the moment you hit start in the connector, the moment you load in a plane, so a new plane gets loaded in, it sometimes has different default values, that gets sent to your board, and your board will be uh, more up to date and more up to speed with the latest variables. It's important to know though that this only happens with the outputs in your events file and not the default outputs that are in the connector. That is something that's coming later on. The events file was just easier to implement, um, so you can already utilize the features while I work on the default variables to do the same. Now we've got three default points where we send the data. It's the moment we start the flight, so it's completely loaded in. The moment we start the connector and when the game starts, I believe. So I made a teeny tiny mistake in the event file um, while shooting this video. So that is why you see these 11,000 uh, something errors. So ignore it for now. But what I wanted to show you is that right now, if you receive data or it, you, it receives data. So yeah, if you receive data or you send data and the connector receives it, the logs will now properly show in the information tab instead of the error tab. So it doesn't confuse you like, oh my God, something's going wrong. I thought the only way to log something was the error messages, but I was wrong. I just kind of peeked at the fly-by-wire code and it, it was really simple. But it doesn't matter, uh, right now it will just show up in the information tab showing you what you received and what it sends towards the connector. <laughs> like I mentioned, this update doesn't really change that much on the game side, but it, it are these little quality of life improvements that make using the connector a little bit more fun instead of a chore or a drag. If you got more suggestions or there are things in there that you like, I have to do this every time and Dave, it really bothers me or there is something that you, a feature that you're missing that would make your life uh, easier as a home cockpit builder or just a flight sim lover or just a novice that's starting out creating their own hardware, let me know, hit me up on Discord, I'll put a link in the description and I'd love to hear from you how we can improve and I'd love to hear your suggestions um, and feedback. So thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but most importantly, I hope to see you in the next one.